Buenos dias. I'm Ana Garcia. We are starting with music and I love it because it's a universal language that brings people together. Have you had your coffee this morning? This first performance by local salsa star may tip your coffee cup over. Just kidding. His new single, Nunca Es Tarde, means it's never too late. And the words in Spanish are so romantic with words like, it's never too late to say I love you, it's never too late love to love each other. <laughs> Papo Ruiz y la dulzura de la salsa, his band is called The Sweetness of the Salsa. His new single has words like, against the wind, the tide, against everything, we beat the odds. We will always be together because of our true love. <laughs> Then I went to a band and actually they hired me into a guido to play the guido and then from there they gave me the opportunity to sing. And here I am. Uh, 20 years after I did my first uh, production. And it's called Nunca Estarde. And uh, now that's what we're promoting actually. And it's doing really awesome. So I'm very happy about that. <laughs> It's selling a line on CD Baby, we have it on Spotify, we have it on the, or YouTube, I have a lot of views, my God, so far, I'm very happy. Um, all over, all over, I have uh, paparuiz.com, uh, which is my website right now, and you can see all the, the, all the events, and uh, everywhere I'm going to be playing with my band, and it's, uh, I'm very, very, very honored to be, you know, be playing in California right now. It's playing all over Puerto Rico, it's playing in Colombia, it's playing in uh, Central America, Venezuela, Peru, Lima. I mean, it's saying, uh, all over, thank God, and it's getting a lot, a lot of success. songs uh, 20 years ago, originals, uh, and uh, never did nothing with them, and then I didn't know where I had them, but well, one time I found them, and when I found them, I said, you know what, it's never too late, and then I said, Nunca es tarde, it's never too late in Spanish, so I decided to write a song called Nunca es tarde, which I dedicate to my wife, uh, is, uh, we've been together for almost 20, well, 27 years, thank God, and and Nunca Estada, that means like, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, a lot of good things that have been in, in, in our experience together and also in the music that I didn't, never did it and I did it because of her, because the way she helps me out and she's, uh, she's always going to be my number one fan and my number and my right hand, so. A lot, a lot. I have three boys um, with my wife, and uh, for 27 years, like I said before, and, and it means a lot. It means a lot because they are the strength. They are my strength. They are my everything. I do is because of them. Actually, my parents. I love my parents. Uh, oh wow, my family. My family knows who I am, how I am. Uh, my brothers, my sisters, everybody. It's just, it's, it's just my strength because they give me that strength every time they see me, you know, so it's, it's a pleasure to have them around. And your band? And my band, I love those guys, I love those guys. Those guys are marvelous, uh, they're very professional, they're very uh, responsible. Um, you kind of have the best of the best up there. So yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's awesome being with them because without them, I cannot do nothing either. I cannot be singing, well, without me, that, you know, it's not a band either, so we're all, we're all a group, we're a family. We treat each other like a family, we respect each other. The bass, timbales, congas, vocals, all these different instruments played together perfectly to give us this Latin sound. Salsa. And in this salsa experience, the words that remind us it's never too late to... And you finish the sentence. If 
you'd like to book Bopple and his band, you can contact him at bopple651 at att.net. Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, where looking good is understood. Cleveland's first Hispanic female barber entrepreneur, and she does my hair every week. Her team does hair, updos, eyebrows, pedicures, and will do your makeup for that special occasion. Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, located at 4355 Ridge Road in Brooklyn, Ohio. You can contact her and her staff at 216-961-4441, elizabethimage.com. All right, if you're a pet owner, this story is for you. Here is something that your dog or cat will wear and not want to take off, and they look adorable. And a local 16-year-old who attends Harvey High School invented it. Here's a new way to dress up your pet. Pablo Arredondo was part of a class called E-City. It stands for Entrepreneurship, Connecting, Inspiring, and Teaching Youth. And he's also part of the Future Business Leaders of America program. Both are offered at Harvey High School in Painesville. Pablo started his own business, Whiskerware. Isn't Casey cute? And look what she's wearing. She's wearing a bow tie called Whisker Wears. And Pablo Arredondo is the inventor of Whisker Wears. He is the Entrepreneur of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about that. This is your award here? Yeah, so I competed at Ernst Young for a district um, business plan competition where the students, they create their own business and present their business plan and the first place gets $1,000 and a $2,000 scholarship, um, which is what I won. Um, so you won a total of how much? Um, well, first we had a classroom competition where I got $300 because I also won first place there. Mm -hmm. So it totals out at around at $3,300. That's great, that's wonderful. Like, how'd you come up with the idea? Um, well, my dog, she doesn't like wearing traditional dog clothes, and my mom always loved to dress her up. So I came up with this um, invention to, um, because it goes over the dog's original collar, it doesn't bother her. As you can see, she's really calm. And um, I, we wanted to dress her up, so we put an interchangeable snap-on bow tie, which can be taken off and on and traded with another bow tie. Oh, nice, you have different colors. Yep different fa fabric there. You just snap it back on. All right, so tell us how you do it. You want to show us how you, do, how you make them? Um, yeah, so let me put Casey down. So I start off with a sheet of fabric. Um, traditionally, I use like dog or cat themed um, fabrics. Like this is a, a paw print fabric. And I have these metal templates, um, which make it a lot easier to um, draw out what, my, what the material is going to look like mm -hmm. and I just use a pencil and trace over it. So, bef so I know that your, um, your dog doesn't like to wear outfits but like most people wouldn't think about doing something like that. Like do you like working with fabric? Do you, um, you got a business mind? Where do you think it comes from? Um, well, I just wanted to find a way to dress up my dog. Um, I didn't know anything you about love fabric. Your dog. Yeah, I love my dog. I didn't know anything about fabrics. I didn't know how to sew. So, <laughs> so cute. this process helped me like develop those skills that most kids my age do, don't have. Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So I had to learn how to sew. I had to learn, like, like I didn't. I thought you could just use any regular scissors to cut out the fabric, but it has to be fabric shears. He gets a lot of support from his family, especially his madre. The truth. <laughs> she's your right hand woman? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the businessman, she's the technical um, manager. Seamstress, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. good. I'm very impressed with you. <laughs> Thank you. That is so wonderful. And you have a 3.5 GPA now for how many years? Um, two years in a row. I'm going to be a junior next year. Uh huh. So Pablo won this award yesterday. Yes. And he's just full of awards. If you look <laughs> at this table, 
Your oh. parents must be so proud. I'm yeah. proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Cry. Okay, so how much is how much was this one for? Um, this is a $500 book scholarship for um, the college of that I want to go to. And so, what did you do to win this one? Um, recently, I visited a accounting camp called Accounting Careers Awareness Program um, at the Ohio State University, and. Um, they had us write a one-page essay of the different sessions we had there, and they chose 10 out of the 41 kids to receive um, the $500 book scholarship, and I was one of them. He is 16 going on 30. Recognition, trophies, medals, all for business development and academic excellence. An intelligent, extraordinary teenager who has support from Harvey High School and local business programs that are pushing for economic development in Northeast Ohio. Houses in Northeast Ohio are selling at a record speed and with home sales up, is it a good time to change careers and become a realtor or maybe a dual career? Realtor Feliz Colón can tell you how to become a real estate agent on her team and Keller Williams Realty explains why it's maybe a good time to sell your home. What's affecting the market is supply and demand. Uh, there's a lot of demand out there for homes right now and the supply is not as high. So the buyers are getting discouraged that they're not finding the right home for them because more people are out there looking for that same home. So we have a lot of situations where we're in multiple offers right now. It's a seller's market. Realtor Feliz Colon is excited about building a team of agents during all this great activity and sharing her successful strategies with them. Here's how you get started, and Colon says she will help you every step of the way. You do need to get a license. Um, I went part-time to school while I was working my other job, so it took me three months, um, but they do have a fast track um, where you do um, weekends all day and it, it's faster. Mm -hmm. I think you finish like in two months or something. And then the, um, and I think that was like $1,500. Mm -hmm. And then the test was uh, like $120 to take the test. Mm -hmm. um, so we, me and Matt were talking about this earlier. It ranges anywhere from, I would say 1,500 to 3,000 just to get started because you got to get your business cards and your signs and things like that. Now, if you're on my team, I already have all those things. I already have signs. I already have those things. So you wouldn't need to, pot, you know, pot, that would be something you wouldn't need to purchase mm -hmm. because you could use my signs and things like that. Um, so how much would it cost to be on your team then? So well, 3000 it would be? It would probably just be like 2000 Prior to her career in real estate, Colon was at a company where she managed more than 30 people and ran two departments. She runs the business with her husband, Marvin Colon, at her side. Why should people join Feliz's team? For the support, for the training, for the mentorship, for the knowledge, uh, and just simply because she's very focused and helped them be very focused. But when you take a look at it across the country, it's all about what is it you can do for me? And really we want to shift that focus a little bit and is what is it that I can do for you? Because if I can't help you succeed, and if I can't help you become successful in your goals and aspirations, then it's not going to work for me. So yeah, we just sold this one uh, last month. Feliz Colon is driven, and while she looks at the real estate market as a whole, she specializes in Hispanic clients. You know, we're bilingual, me and my husband, so um, there's not that many bilingual realtors right now in the market, so I really would like to get more um, people who are bilingual so that we can, you know, more networking, more community, more help. We all need to work together to help each other. More education. Yes, a more education. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I think part of the reason they don't buy houses is they don't know how to do it. Correct. Correct. The language barriers. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the contracts. They don't understand the, you know, the wording, things like that. So that's where we come in. And we, you know, sit with them. Um, a lot of times, most uh, realtors won't go with the person to the um, title when they're signing papers and things, but I do, just so that I make sure that I, they know what they're signing and what, what's going on and things like that.
Our remodeling expert, Jose Rodriguez, outdid himself this week. He did a kitchen transformation for about $600 if you do it yourself. The upgrade changed the whole look of the house and saved the owner thousands of dollars. Hi, I'm Jose Rodriguez from Visionary Remodeling and today I'm going to show you how to, instead of removing these cabinets, how you can repaint them and refinish them to look just as good as replacing them. And when you are involved in selling a house, you could do it two different ways. You could go out your way by buying new cabinets for a couple thousand dollars and, and hiring a contractor like me, then you have $5,000 in it. Today I'm going to show you a cheap way of doing this by just buying a can of paint like this. You could use a satin finish and you could pay anywhere from $15 to $20 and you could do this yourself. Within two days you'll save a couple of thousand dollars. Time to get dirty. So the next step is to remove all hinges and all doors so that you are able to paint the trim around the front of the facial. So once you take this off, it's very important that you take a piece of tape and just put the tape right here. You take the hinge off and put the tape here and mark number one because since the hinge is gonna go here, you really don't have to paint this area. So just put a blue piece of tape, put number one here and put your number one here. Make sure that you take this to another room, have a drop cloth down, and we'll use either some styrofoam cups that you could buy at the dollar store and use them as props and set all four down like this. And while you paint this door on this side, you take another one and by that time this one is dry, you just flip it over and you paint the other side. You could take four of these plastic foam cups that I bought at the dollar store and you could use them after you take your hinges off like I did here, you could use them as a prop. Ta -da! Oh my God. And you could, you don't have to use makeup on television. All you do is just take this powder. <laughs> you take some of this powder here and you just put it on your face. Like makeup. Gives you a good look. <laughs> That's all you need is a couple seconds, 30 seconds on both sides. Take your wet, a uh, damp rag and just wipe this off. Make sure you do not sand your numbers. These are the numbers that is gonna tell me exactly this is number four going to the top hinge, and this is number four going to the bottom. That's a four B. Now you can start off with a, a small tray like this. This is a handy tray, easy to clean out or throw away. It's $2 if you, at the end of the day you're tired and um, you don't feel like cleaning it out, just throwing away $2. You take it, what I do is I start with the inside of the cabinet like this, and everything else is gonna be rolled. You wanna use, the roller that you see here is a quarter inch roller. It's a very good roller, so it, it almost make it look like you're spraying it on. Just make sure that your brush doesn't dry out on you and keep it always moist and very light. Take back and forth strokes like this, put this back in here, and then you're just gonna roll like this. And make sure that you don't try to paint the, the door in one shot, because if you do, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to tell that you was rolling it. So just push it in like this, just like that. Look at how easy that is. Since the sun is 90 degrees here in Cleveland, Ohio today, this door is not gonna take very long to dry. So what I do is I'll do two at a time and then I'll go back inside, hang one, bring one out, and as I go, I come, it's, it could be done very easily and very quickly if you, if you have a technique. It looks like it's stuck, but it's, it, it doesn't even, see, no paint at all. Once you have them all done, just hang them back up, starting with the bottom one. Try this at home and you, you'll be very successful, you'll be very happy with these tips.
Visionary Remodeling, coming to your house soon. I have a friend from Mexico that taught me how to make chile rellenos, stuffed poblano peppers with mozzarella cheese. I have friends who only go to the Mexican restaurant because they want this dish. So get this, you can buy 12 poblano peppers for about $4 and then stuff them with mozzarella cheese and a little rice on the side and you could feed at least six people. All right, here is Mexican rice. Mm. Beautiful Mexican rice. Lupita from Guanajuato, Mexico sí. made this rice and she's gonna show us how to make it. All right, so yeah. where do we start? Okay. Pongo un poco de aceite. A little bit of oil. Okay. So this is one cup of rice, ¿verdad? Sí, aquí una está taza una de taza de arroz. Okay. Se pone el arroz. Se menea hasta que se pone um, como como brown. Como, uh, uh -huh, como café. Okay, so you mix it up until the brown the oil turns a little brown. Y ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Caldo es de pollo? Caldo de pollo. So chicken, chicken flavor bouillon. Sí. Nora's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Y pongo. That smells so good. ¿Cuánto le echa? Una cucharada. ¿Aquí adentro de leche? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sí. This is one tablespoon of the Nora chicken bouillon. Sí. So now it's brown, so it's a good time to. Add the tomato and the onion and the chicken mm -hmm. bouillon. See? And then you usually put a little bit more water, um, enough so you don't even see the rice, right? Mm -hmm. And then once it boils, then we'll put the, the cover the, on, uh -huh, lower the heat. Le bajas. Mm -hmm. While the rice is cooking, she's going to make some chile re rellenos. See? Sí. Which are, what kind of, uh, ¿qué clase de chile son estos? Chile poblano. Chile, so are they spicy? Chile mm, poblano. A veces sale un poco picoso, pero no, no. Not very mm -hmm. spicy, so chile poblanos stuffed with, ¿qué tiene adentro? Queso. Cheese. Queso mozzarella. Mozzarella cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Y afuera se pone huevo. Se capea con huevo. Okay, so when you fry it, you put the mm -hmm. egg and you're going to show us how to do that. Joko, I know a lot of um, people that are like not Hispanic, that they just go to the Mexican restaurant just to get chile de llenos. Sí. Directamente well. a la lumbre. Mm -hmm. Es más rápido así. Okay. Más fácil. No sé si quieran ver esto. Sí, sí. No más que um, esto te ensucia demasiado la estufa. Oh, she said if you do it that way, it'll dirty your stove. Sí. So sometimes she likes to do it here. Sí, porque así se ensucia aquí. Mm -hmm. Pero esto es más rápido. So when you, cuando lo cocinas así, como que le saca el, el, el sabor. La, la, no, le uh, oh. quita la cáscara dura. Oh, okay. Si no lo haces, queda muy oh. duro para comerse. Entonces básicamente aquí lo estás cociendo. Ok. Y, um, wow. Ok, so when you do that, you, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get the peel off. Because mm -hmm. if you don't get the peel off and you stuff them, they're going to be too hard to eat. Sí. Okay. So sometimes when you're peeling it, some of the juice will come out of the pepper and and it will actually, some if it's spicy, it, it will feel like a burn. Sí, te, es como si te enchilaras las manos. Como cuando tú comes chile en la boca, uh -huh. como te arde, así te arden oh, las manos. Oh, so your hands feel like when you eat a hot chili in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it's an, it's, how do you know if they're hot or not? No sabes. You don't know? No. <laughs> Hasta que te los comes okay. o, te lo, o te arden las oh, manos. Oh my goodness, okay. Igual, um, en, mi mamá me dijo que poniéndote poquito aceite de cocinar antes de pelarlo en tus oh. manos, hace que el jugo resbale y no se quede en tus dedos. I see. So she es, said her mom is. told her the secret so that way that juice doesn't burn you like it would be when you ate the, the hot chile. Sí. So if you, before you peel them, you take, her mom told her to take oil and put it all over her hand so that way if the juice falls on your hand, then it'll just slip off, it won't sí. burn you. Mm. Agarras una bolsa de plástico, take lo pones adentro, bag. Okay. Para que se cosa un poco más. It keeps cooking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Después de cinco minutos, se saca. Mm -hmm. After five minutes, you take it back out. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, y se empieza a pelar. So you just peel it. 
Did you put oil? Oh, no me he puesto. Ok. Gracias, se me olvidó. Ok, se pone uh, así poquito. Como si fuera crema. Ok, so like if it was like cream on your hands. Uh -huh. Se agarra. Si ves cómo sale toda la... Oh, wow, la... it just comes right off. Uh -huh. Also, más que... Okay, so you, just, you don't use the yolk. You just no. use the white, the egg white. Mm -hmm. Por ahorita. For now. Ahorita lo tengo que um, batir. Mm -hmm. El secreto, para mm -hmm. que no se corte rápido, mm -hmm. se agarra poquita harina. Esta es de, uh, ¿cómo lo llaman? Flour. Ah, uh -huh. esta flour. No se acabe muy rápido. Okay. Se adhieren los huevos. Sí. How much cheese? You just keep stuffing it with cheese. The more cheese, the better. Con mucho, sí. <laughs> Harina. Okay, so you put flour all over. Just put mm -hmm. plain flour on the chile. Sí. Se pone así. Mm -hmm. Se cierra. Te sure asegura, ajá, para que el queso no se salga. Pones el chile mm -hmm. adentro del huevo. Se mm -hmm. llena todo. Mm -hmm. Tratas de poner lo que está mm -hmm. abierto hacia mm -hmm. abajo para mm -hmm. que selle mm -hmm. con el huevo. ¿O donde está el queso? Ajá, donde oh. está la abierta tratas de oh, ponerla hacia so abajo. Where the opening is. Sí. Make sure you fry that first. Ajá. Y ya dejas que... That seal it with the egg. Ajá. Uh -huh. So she doesn't want the egg to be um, runny, mm -hmm. so she likes it to be brown. Like that, but that's it. Sí, asegurarme mm -hmm. que está más cocinado. Mm -hmm. That ensures that it's cooked well. There's some things, you do, it, me imagino que tú has comido un montón de chiles en tu sí. vida, pero que no te cansas, ¿verdad? Mm -mm. There's some Adoro food. los chiles. Yeah. <laughs> So there's some sí. foods that you can eat forever and you never get tired of it. For you, it's mm -hmm. chiles. So Niños, a comer! Y todos aparecen. This is come and eat, children. This is right, really nice, Lupita. Thank you so much for inviting me to mm -hmm. your dinner. Thank you. Come. I thought it was really wonderful. She was telling me that they have dinner at least three or four times a week together. Yeah. Even though they both, you both work, work right? mm -hmm. and as they as go to they, school. As long as we're not busy, like at soccer practices or doing, mm -hmm. or working. The fact that you can get together three or four times a week is huge. With as busy as American families are, Mr. Yeah. Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Amor, ven a comer. Buen provecho means enjoy your food. Thank you so much for having me here today. Thank you. It's so fun to have a Mexican friend. <laughs> That cooks amazing food. Not only do you, you have amazing food, you have amazing family. Thank you so much.